package, you just install the package. It's a lot more difficult to do things in a live CD. Uh, and also you got to deal with proprietary operating systems. My, I can't make a live CD legally using Microsoft. I cannot. So unfortunately, these scenarios are strictly Linux based. It's a problem. A lot of people out there would be more interested in the Windows stuff, I understand that, but this would, these disks are actually good for getting your feet wet and understanding how the process works on penetration testing, and then you can move on to something else. All right. What do you, I needed some standards. I wanted to use Slacks because I was familiar with Backtrack, and I like Backtrack. Backtrack, uh, hardware router. This is what's recorded lab, and you have to have two blazing fast machines like what we got demonstrated here. A target, attack, a target system and an attack system. One to actually hold your live CD and then another one to load up on Backtrack. All right, some more standards. Uh, target machine, I decided originally I was gonna do DHCP for all these disks. I know this is, you know, a lot of you guys are probably gonna start falling asleep for a in a minute, but this was just kind of, I, I'll let you understand what the, the ideas behind this is so when you actually see a disk 1.100 or 2.100, you'll know what it is, what it means. Uh, I figured originally I was gonna go DHCP. DHCP was gonna be a real problem if I wanted to do man in the middle attack scenarios. So what I decided to do is do a numbering uh, scenario. A dot, uh, 192.168.1 dot dot whatever is a level one disk. Two dot whatever is a level two disk. Uh, there's gonna be a level three disk out soon. Um, and so it'll be three dot whatever. Uh, I t the attack machine can be a dynamic uh, DHCP, basically. Um, router needs to provide DHCP, and also I wanted to push methodologies. I mean, you're gonna learn penetration testing, you might as well have a methodology behind you. I push ISSAF now, OSSTMM turned out to be two of a high level for people who are really interested in getting to the level one disk, so. Um, I, Eliminate, it does not eliminate the need for specialized services. If you want to hack a PIX firewall, you still got to hack a PIX firewall. I can't virtualize that. Uh, Juniper equipment, whatever. Uh, you also need to understand basic routing. At this point, if you're trying to learn how to do penetration testing before you know how to set your IP address, there's a problem. Um, I'm going to blaze over this real quick. Slacks, you can just throw in some modules. That basically, they're pre-built. You drop them in there and you go. And one of the, some of the, and they also have some pre-built uh, ISOs, uh, and they have services running on them as well. You could get a really small one, new price, uh, under the new license. Not very user friendly. You can build your own. Here's the basic file structure, real quick. The root copy directory is where I put everything. So if you actually want to see what I did on the disk, look in there. Usually what you're supposed to do is you modulize everything, put it in one big pretty package and stick it on there. I, I left everything open so once you guys actually hack the disk and you want to know what, how I set it up, you can go back and look at it. I don't want any, you know, I want you guys to know everything about it. More. You can put IP tables. There's different ideas as for behind uh, the different levels. Pretty, pretty straightforward, it makes sense. Real world, real world scenarios, these are some of the things that I've picked up along the way. They should be pretty familiar with a lot of you people, um, especially if you've done any of this stuff. Okay. I mentioned that people are familiar with certain things like uh, damn vulnerable Linux, or there's a couple other ones. And what they usually do is, when uh, I get these emails, and they get posted up on the board as well, um, they down, somebody downloads the disk and says, hey, I can't log into the system. Well, the problem is, is that what you're doing is you're setting up a server that you're supposed to have no idea about, and it is supposed to be um, your challenge. The, you're not supposed to know the password. And I explain that, and they say, yeah, okay, I got it. So what's the password? I can't log in to do the actual hacking. Well, I understand that. It's because you're not supposed to know that. Well, well then how am I supposed to do this disk if I don't know the password? Well, you're supposed to do all this other stuff on the other side. It is a server. Just pretend that you can't even see it. You know, it, you, you see it boot up and it's like, hey, yeah, okay, I'm good to go. Problem is, is that you got to think that you, your router is the internet and you're not supposed to even being able to see this disk. So you got to go through the entire thing like the discovery and you have to start doing scans and you have to do all those things that you normally would do. The objective is to get that root password. The objective is to find those hidden documents in these disks. You're not supposed to know that at the get-go. 
So it, think of it actually as a real-world scenario, as if you're hacking somebody's server. All right? You don't even know their, the people's names. Seriously. So here's a, here's a configuration. You got your Backtrack CD, you got your router, and then you got your disk. I'm going to go over the scenario of the 1.100 disk. Um, if there was a lot more people in here that had actually gone through it, I would have breezed through a little bit better. But this will hopefully give a bit of a flush out on uh, what these disks are about. So the scenario is, is that your CEO is pressured by the board of directors to have penetration testing done. Small companies, this is very, uh, you know, people read the trading magazines, oh, we've got to have this. Got to do a penetration test. I don't want to lose my job. And so the, the, the CEO is like, yeah, whatever. I don't want to spend the money. So he thinks it's a huge waste of money. Um, he's already had corp, uh, companies scan their network for vulnerabilities. You, you, know, you, you, buy the, you, you buy the $200 service, which is somebody scans it and sends you this big, long report. And it sits on front of the uh, network uh, manager's desk and is filed. And nobody does anything. That's what the, typically people have. I know this for a fact from my previous experience. This is what really happens. So real world scenario. All right, so you get hired, you guys are the penetration testers. You get hired to do the hack. Um, I, I included, because this is, the, this is a level one disk, I included some hints. If you guys get stuck, and it, it happens, um, there's just hints. And basically what it is, is it's um, white, letter, or white letters on white background. You know, you gotta highlight to figure out what the next step is. Uh, it, you can't just stumble on it, so it won't ruin the party for you. Um, but you can go through without doing that, and you can go through without hitting the forms, which have complete spoilers as well. But the objective for this is to actually learn how to, process, uh, learn how to do penetration testing, learn the process of penetration testing, which is why I mentioned the ISSAF, um, and then use the tools, learn how to use the tools. That's going to be important to remember in a second, learn the tools. All right, some of the tools required for the disk uh, 1.100. Nmap, Firefox, SSH, Hydra, John the Ripper. These are very typical tools. Everybody should be familiar with these at this point. Uh, and, and for those that aren't, this is a perfect opportunity to learn those and to actually, you know, like try the brute force stuff and try the denial of service stuff. It's, you can do this here. Um, tools that are not required, Nessus and Metasploit. Okay. Great tools, I will not deny that. Uh, as far as the Nessus one, we use that in the corporation all the time. That's our baseline. When we actually ramp up a pen test, that's the first thing we grab. Cannot deny that Nessus is not a good tool. It is a great tool. Problem is, is it does a lot for you. It tells you what the vulnerabilities are. It tells you where to go and look for these things. That's not going to help you in the real world learning penetration test. So I don't want you guys clicking. I want you guys to actually do some, some work. All right, Nmap scan. I'm going to just kind of go through what people would see. They see that there's some services open, FTP, SSH, SMTP. OK, there's a lot of places to start. Um, I intentionally broke FTP, uh, you get, basically to get some people banging on that for a while. Uh, yeah, I know I hear chuckles. Um, there are no Nessus vulnerabilities, actually. Well, at this point, there are. But when I originally wrote this a couple years ago, there were not any. Uh, vulnerabilities. I basically had the newer stuff. There's some stuff that's out there, but nothing that would allow you to make a quick um, uh, trip on this disk. You'd be, you know, you can't just hack it right away with clicking. <clears throat> okay, just out of curiosity, I, you know, there's some things out here. I, how many people would actually, I mean, we got FTP, SSH, SMTP. Just out of curiosity, um, how many people would actually um, start probing uh, the HTTP service after they found this. We got one, two people, three people, three people. Okay, I know a lot of people don't raise their hands. All right, there's a lot of opportunities out there that people skip, and unfortunately this is one of the ones that I see a lot of people do in the real world is HTTP is usually easy. Everybody gets familiar with it. It's just something that people tend to shy away from. They want to go for the juicy stuff. Um, unfortunately, you got to do the entire system. You got to understand all the, the working parts. So if you do go to the HTTP info, you find out that there are some system administrators. 
good place to start. You don't know any names, you don't know any logins. Turns out that they actually posted some names, no logins, up on their web server. It happens. That's not unusual. And it's not something that, as a security in, uh, engineer, I'm even really worried about. But what that allows you to do as a penetration tester is actually start, start somewhere. Now, so you got to start creating usernames. Uh, there's a whole bunch. Has anybody uh, actually done a Hydra scan? Yes. All right, you know that uh, there's two things. You need the password list and you need a user list. User lists really slow down the system. It's got to go through every name and got to go through the dictionary every, for each one of those. It's really a massive headache. So you got to try to figure out how to slim that down. With Hydra, basically what we did is we just did some uh, uh, simple flags on Hydra to find out that uh, the intern is an actual idiot. He uses uh, his login name and his password is the same. Well, unfortunately, um, you, you find this out, but fact of the matter is, is that you can't use this account. I know I'm spoiling it a little bit. You can't use this account to actually do anything. But at least now you know the, the way they do their names. All right. Keep going. You actually find out that Adams, the, the guy who's running it, has a password that you can actually hack. All right, so what's next? John the Ripper. You can actually try to find out the, the rest of the, uh, the uh, passwords, and you need to actually be able to get root in this case. So you got to do some things. You also got to get familiar with OpenSSL. I'm going to leave the rest of this to work. There's actually uh, three disks out there. Actually, there's more than that, <clears throat> but only three of them are available right now to you guys. Um, and the hint for the 1.100 disk is to find the CEO bank account. If uh, you're familiar with uh, hacking and this is old hat to you, you should t knock this out in half an hour. Level two disk, um, the best time is two weeks. So, uh, you know, there are some step ups as far as challenges are concerned. Uh, yeah, so. Oh, and the guy who did it in two weeks, um, he was actually on vacation and that it kind of pretty much consumed all of his time. I, I apologize to him for that because I'm sure his wife was a little disappointed and that's how he spent his, his holiday, but anyway. Okay. <clears throat> I am at the end of basically the first part of this lecture. Uh, at this point, um, when I was at uh, DEF CON, I had a plea for action. Uh, I'm I would like people to do these disks themselves, to actually create their own disks. I am not the smartest guy in the world. I know that there are people out there that are a lot better than I am. And unfortunately, it's hard to get them to share their knowledge. If they were to actually create one of these, it might actually open a little window into their world so I can actually see what it would be like to be even cooler. Um, there are, like I said, penetration tests has many facets. My particular is, is to attack services. Uh, I'm a big Linux guy, heavy into uh, Solaris. That's my expertise. I'm not really that good at things like web-based. I don't like it, never did. Um, I'm not that good at uh, uh, network hacks as well. Um, I'm learning, trying to learn that. So if there are people out there that have those skill sets, I would encourage you to develop these disks on your own. It's really simple, it's not that difficult to do. And then share the wealth. Okay, so that's the plea I was basically making at, uh, at uh, DEF CON um, over a year ago, or about a year ago. <clears throat> Problem is, nobody did it. <clears throat> Here's some contact information. It's going to come up again here in a minute. Um, not what I wanted. Okay. So like I said, nobody really, there's one guy who actually put together a disk that was not scenario based, but it required you to put together um, exploits from Millworm. It's cool. And uh, I, I praise him for that, and it was really a good idea to do stuff like that. That was I would wanted to do that for a level three disk. Uh, I'm actually going to postpone that because he's already come out with it. Um, but I found that as a uh, I'm going to jump down um, back to the slides because I'm going to just ramble on here in a second. It says uh, the deficiency. There's some deficiencies in learning that I've experienced in the last year and a half, or two years doing these disks and stuff. Um, one of the problems is that people only know what the basics of the tools are. Uh, they are unfamiliar with the actual flags. Uh, I, I kind of, um, I got a little story. I was at college and uh, um, 
came out into the parking lot and there was this girl. She had her, the hood of her vehicle